you are watching Redicon. Hi, I'm going to talk about wrist and hand MR. We're going to talk about uh, osseous pathology, triangular fibrocartilage complex, intrinsic carpal ligaments, ulnar impaction or imp abutment syndromes, tendon pathology, Guillaume's canal. Uh, talk briefly about a UCL of the thumbs, met metacarpophalangeal joint, and some pitfalls of pseudomasis. So uh, the main osseous pathology, or one of the osseous pathology you might come across, is a kind box disease, which is avascular necrosis of the lunate. There are different grades of it. Um, you can either try to uh, remember the grades and describe it, or just describe what the findings are. In stage one, uh, the height or the shape of the lunate remains the same, but you get uh, wrist pain and you do an MRI and you see this patchy low T1 signal and hyper intense stir signal changes in the lunate that would point towards uh, early kind box disease. Stage two is where you tend to uh, get some sclerosis on the plane films, but the uh, shape or the morphology of the lunate may remain the same or it may go under early collapse. And on MR, you see diffuse low T1 signal here. It's quite diffuse and uh, involving the whole of the lunate, and you get this patchy hyperintense signal intensity on stir sequences in the lunate. In stage three, you get lunate collapse. So uh, lunate loses its shape, uh, and you get uh, low T1 signal and low to intermediate patchy uh, stir or fat cell signal intensity within the lunate. So that's more advanced stage of the uh, kind box disease. And stage four is when the lunate uh, undergo fragmentation, it collapses, it broken into pieces, and then what you get is radiocarpal and midcarpal joint osteoarthrosis or osteoarthritis. Uh, due to advanced uh, uh, kind box disease as demonstrated on this plane radiograph. On the MR, you get fragmentation, you get collapse, and you get this uh, secondary osteoarthritic changes between the lunate, capitate, and radius and lunate as demonstrated here. Scaphoid fracture is next commonly or perhaps the most commonly encountered fracture of the carpal bones. Uh, Delayed or non-junion is not uncommon. Uh, if you are in a rush, and you can quickly do coronal T1, coronal stir, and axial T2 fat cell sequences. These three sequences would be able to give you uh, the diagnosis in a short period of time without uh, compromising uh, uh, onto the image quality. So what you see is uh, that on T1 weighted sequence, uh, which we should almost always try to have one T1 weighted sequence in any MSK imaging. Uh, so you get this low T1 uh, signal intensity traversing the waist of this uh, scaphoid here with surrounding patchy signal changes. Uh, that is classic example of a non-displaced uh, fracture through the scaphoid waist. Uh, in the second case here, you can see as well, so there is a low T1 uh, signal intensity, a bit more extensive than as compared to our first case. And there are also signal changes within the uh, distal and proximal poles of the scaphoid, more extensive. So you can see the normal fat in the lunate, but here this is all more intermediate signal. And if you have star sequences, it will uh, demonstrate a low edema or marrow edema. So avascular necrosis, the classical findings are that you have diffuse low signal within the necrotic region on both T1 and T2 weighted sequences. Um, if there's a preservation of high signal intensity on T1 weighted signal, uh, T1 weighted images that is fat, then uh, it usually means that some of the vascularity is preserved. The more the fat signal is there, the more chance is that the proximal pole of the scaphoid is viable. As, as we know that the uh, vascular supply to the scaphoid uh, comes from the distal poles, so the proximal pole of the scaphoid is, increased, uh, is at increased risk of AVN if there is a disruption to the vascular uh, structures uh, in the presence of scaphoid waste fracture. What we can do to uh, see, assess further, you can do post-contrast T1 weighted sequences, fat set uh, sequences to see if, if there is enhancement in the proximal pole, it means there is blood supply to it, so which in turn means that the, the proximal pole is still viable, so the surgical approach would be different. So this is a case of uh, uh, likely AVN on the basis of MR findings, so you can see there is a T2 star gradient echo sequence with signal change. 
uh, or low signal intensity in the proximal pole and also diffusely low signal intensity on T1 VAT signal. So you can see there's patchy signal uh, fat si present within the distal pole as well in the other carpal bones, but in the proximal pole is diffusely low T1. It means almost all of the fat is gone and uh, this is unlikely to be a viable uh, uh, proximal pole. Scaphoid, uh, so yes, so this is a case of a post contrast T1 fat cell sequence. So you can see it's a, uh, the distal and proximal pole of the scaphoid are enhancing. Uh, there's probably a bit of osseous bridging here uh, at the lateral side of the fracture. Some of the fracture line is still visible. Uh, so on the basis of the findings that there is enhancement of the proximal pole of the scaphoid, therefore the vascularity is likely to be retained or uh, the proximal pole of the scaphoid is viable. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses. For more modules and radiology CMAs, please visit www.radicon.org. Thank you.